In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step by step some advanced grading techniques in After Effects and take your animations from looking like this to like this. So here in After Effects, um, you can see we've got the scene laid out. It's relatively flat looking and relatively plain looking. Um, and we're going to go through a process um, of grading it. Now, I recommend doing this dead last, um, not only because it takes time, um, but also it, it really bumps up. You render the times, sometimes double, even triple. Um, so I'd recommend doing this process after pretty much the animation is signed off. Um, you know, if you can get client feedback first and then do this process, it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run if there is any changes um, to the animation. Um, so the first thing I typically like to add is floor shadows um, to anything. So, for example, um, for this, we'd have the, the character would have a shadow and also this building with the fences. Now, I do have a tutorial already on how to get uh, dynamic floor shadows, so I'm not going to go into that uh, this tutorial. Um, but I will link that down below if you want to go back and watch that one. So if I turn the floor shadows on, you can see already that brought a little bit of life to the scene, a little bit more depth. Um, you know, we've got it on the building, like I said, and the uh, the character. And because it's all dynamic, you know, the, uh, this shadow is going to follow um, this character and the builder. So after the floor shadows, what I like to add um, is anything that's out of focus, uh, a blur on it. So for example, in this scene, um, these bushes here would be out of focus uh, and then gradually going back from this building and the character would, would be um, would be out of focus. And the, the best um, the best blur effect would be camera lens blur. Now it is quite render intensive. You could get away with a with a Gaussian blur, um, which which is quicker, but camera lens blur does tend to look uh, a little bit better. So for for the furthest away things, i.e. Um, these bushes and the back buildings, I like to start off at around ten. So you can see they're quite blurred out now, and it already gives you that little bit of depth between what's in focus and what's out of focus. So we just copy the camera lens blur from um, the, the bushes, and we'll go back down to, let's say, the sun and the clouds, so they're out of focus. Um, the back buildings, they can be on 10, um, and then we've got the buildings in front of them. I'd maybe start dropping now to maybe seven, for example, because uh, they're out of focus. So if we go into the main assets now, which is um, anything that's sort of in, in this focus here, we go into here. Um, the trees, again, probably probably got a five on them. Um, so if we go back to the main view, the depth is there now. So anything beyond this, um, this line of, of, of assets is, is blurred out. And what I like to do, um, I like to create a adjustment layer above everything in the scene. And I like to add a, a camera lens blur again, maybe crushing it up to, to 10, so it's really out of focus. Um, and then I like to add a mask, an ellipse mask around it, invert it so everything around the border here is blurred, so even, even this. And if we shrink it down slightly, you can see here, that's where it cuts off. And then if we add maybe a 200 pixel feather, it's got to feather that out there. Okay. And another good uh, effect to, to link with the camera lens blur is an effect called scatter. And you only need to look at maybe two or three. And what that does, it gives a little bit of little bit of detail, a little, little bit of texture in the blurs. So you might add that to the bushes uh, completely. Another thing you want to make sure of, uh, the adjustment layer that goes over everything, you want to make sure that that's continuously rasterized. That's, that's why that was happening there. Okay. So now we've got the, the blurs in, um, 
and we've got the shadows in we can now and highlights from for each individual um asset so there's a couple of ways you can do this uh, a good plugin is called shadow studio 2 um that's that's a good way of getting shadows and highlights um it isn't free so i'm going to show you a way you can do it for free uh, so we'll start off with the front bushes okay we'll solo it so you can just see the front bushes and when you whenever you're doing shadows and highlights it's also good to not to uh, solo the light source so, so for in this case the light source is obviously the sun here so if you duplicate uh the the source the the asset of where we're adding the highlight and duplicate it twice and the top one needs to be an alpha map of the second one and it needs to be inverted okay so what this means is at this point we we wouldn't be able to see it because this is in the exact same place as that one if we change it color dodge is a good way of getting highlights and then we move the second one that, that would now be hidden if we move it you can see we're getting this highlight from the sun so obviously you need to move it in the direction um, of where the sun is coming from you don't want it over here because that would indicate the light coming from from this angle so you want to move it over here so this bit here would be getting most of the light and this bit here would be getting less light now you can turn the opacity of that down i'd usually say 70 is a good place to start uh, and i'm moving it moving up ever so slightly like that so that should give us now like a light um balance a light highlight on these bushes here so you can see the lights coming over and hit indeed here so we're gonna um gonna do the exact same process on pretty much everything in the scene so we'll start with the with the biker I'll just quickly show this one and then I'll speed the rest up um so we again duplicate the biker twice track mat it to the one underneath and then invert it change it to color dodge and then if we move this over slightly this you got to get that highlight over there and what I like to do um for the for the highlight for anything that's in focus which is this one here um, if we make sure they are both continuously rasterized and then on the middle layer the alpha I like to add a scatter onto that maybe add two pixels two or three pixels and you can see it, it, it just gives that extra level um let me uncheck that it gives that extra level of detail if you will so two or three and again we can move that around to give it more highlight or less highlight so I might just make it a little bit smaller like that so we can see the highlight now on that character is coming from the sun so i'm just going to do the rest and speed that up ever so slightly so now i've added the highlight to everything um you can see it started to come to life a little bit more um we've got the highlights on the buildings on these bushes um, and i particularly like if we go into the back buildings i particularly like the highlight on the trees and um, just that alone just gives so much more life um to these trees which you can barely really see them in the background and um, but you know the the effect is the so that is that is pretty much it for the effects uh, in terms of adding them onto individual layers um, and now we're going to look at adjustment layers over the top of this um, of, of how it comes to life a little bit more so a little cheat sheet i have is i have this final texture overlay saved as a separate project and i can just import each and every time uh, into a finished project and I can just copy and paste these layers paste them over the top and it's done but we're going to go through um, what each one is um, so you can add them from scratch <clears throat> so the first one is um, just a paper texture and it is set to 10% so you can barely even see it um, over, over, over a plain black background anyway but if we go into here this is just uh, a paper texture that I downloaded for free um, online 
and it is just cut four frames long and it's just cut and duplicated four times and each time it changes um, it will change position scale and rotation and um, that is then pre comped pre-composed and it is just on a, a loop a four second loop stretched out over 14 frames so that's just going to play um for forever so if we copy that and it's on a multiply and it's set to 10 percent. so if we copy that over to here that'll be our first one and again you can barely 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 you can see it uh, but it is there the second one uh, is a speckle similar sort of thing uh, this one is only set to five percent so it's even even less visible again and it's the exact same procedure as the first one i just found a speckle uh, image and looped it um, over eternity so if we paste that on top take it off again at this point you'd, you'd barely be able to tell you know if, the, if there's anything over it so the second and third uh, adjustment layer is what's going to uh, start to you know where we'll be start to be able to see things so we've got a large boil and a small boil so we'll we'll, we'll create these from scratch so on a new adjustment layer we're just going to add turbulent displays okay now obviously from from the start it's going to look written you know silly and we'll call this one large boil okay so the um, the we'll turn the size down first maybe size to 10 okay so you can see it is quite large um i've even tempted to put that to about 14 maybe okay and the amount comes right down to about 10 okay so you can see now this line isn't perfectly straight it's got a bit of a wobble to it probably turn the amount down to about seven maybe there we go okay now at the moment um this boil isn't going to move um it's going to be static so we need to add a, an expression onto the evolution so holding option or alt we'll do that and this will bring up the expression window and we're going to type time times 100 okay so what that's going to do is as the animation is playing and um, this is just going to keep continuously increasing so if we go to different frames, we're going to have a different sized um, boil on each frame. So we can duplicate that and now let's create the small boil. Okay, so if we duplicate it, and we'll call this one small boil. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to turn the size right down to maybe two, two pixels. Okay, and if we zoom in, we're not going to see much when the amount's on seven. So let's put the amount to about 15 maybe. Give me a little time to think about it. Maybe try 30. So you can see now what we're getting, we're getting these real jagged edges in here. Now, each each video is gonna be completely, you know, unique. So play around with these numbers uh, for these last two um, effects. You know, for this one, 30 and two seems to be working quite well. Um, you can see, especially in, the, in these straight lines here uh, and here, I'm going to turn the, the size of that large boil up, uh, sorry, down ever so slightly, maybe 10 pixels. There we go. Um, the next one is grain. So again, on a new adjustment layer, we're going to add grain. And by default, it comes in this little square here. So what you want to do, you want to change the viewing mode to final output. And it's really heavy to begin with. So we'll turn the intensity down to about 0.3. And the size down to about 0.2. Um, but a little goes a long way. So you can see uh, that's quite grainy in that in that part there. So I'm going to put the intensity down to maybe 0.2. Okay. And the last one is a posterized time. Now what posterized time does is basically takes any frame rate of an of a, of a video and animation and it crushes it down to whatever you specify here so this animation is created at 25 frames per second so if, if we was to put that to 12 12.5 that's got a half it so the animation would be drawn each and every frame 
Now, it can be quite a jarring effect. It's not something that I use every single time. I, I do use these every time, but pulse time really is a case by case basis. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll have a little play around with that. Maybe turn the turn the numbers. You know, try try something between twelve and fifteen, and and see if that works. And two of the last effects that we're going to add um, is something that it's a little rig that I've made myself, um, and I'm going to put this in the description if you want to download it. And what it is is basically um, a light lens flare uh, rig. So opening it up, you can see we have um, this light. This would be the light source on this red layer here, which you can turn on and off. So I'd recommend leaving it on for now. And if we, you can see, I've, there's this slider control here, which you can you can control the length of, of the flare. So I, I like to leave it at 100. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that over. And we're going to drop it in um, above pretty much above everything and uh, apart from yeah i'll even put it above that okay so the first thing we want to do is if we solo that and the light source okay and we, this red is the center so you want to put the red where the light source is okay and then rotate it coming obviously away from the sun and if we bring the scale up first scale to about 55% and then if we change the rotation here okay so if we unsolo that and unsolo the sun you can see this light source now is coming away from the sun so if we just make it a little bit bigger like so and I'm just going to nudge the rotation slightly so it doesn't crop off the bottom of the screen like that so then if we go into that and turn off the light source, uh, come back to the main composition, you can see now we've got this um, this light source coming away from the sun once it updates. And that on its own, um, you know, brings a, a, a lot more life into into the animation. I'm just going to turn, it, turn the opacity of it down ever so slightly. It's currently on 70. So let's try 60. Go back and let it update. That looks good. Um, and I've got another one similar to the lens flare, but this is uh, what I call a, a shine um, in here. And um, we can control the length of these um, spikes, let's call them, by changing the direct, the, the scale um, of these two nulls down here. So we've got a left and right one, and we've got an up and down one. So for this, I'm going to again copy it and drop it in here now we want to look at what's going to catch the light here so maybe the edge of this building will and uh, maybe this this lamp here will so we'll try it on this lamp first to go into the main assets uh, we've got the right lamp there so let's paste it above the right lamp and we'll bring it over into position now it's quite a big comp just in case you know it can't be continuously rasterized which it can't so we'll, we'll scale it down and we'll put it on that lamp the maybe rotate it ever so slightly by about 10 pixels and we'll parent it to the right lamp so let's have a look how that looks in here yeah that's looking good I don't think I'm going to put it on on this top building because we've got the um, we've got the light lens flare here, so we don't want it to to contrast too much. And there we have it. That that's pretty much it. That's how you take um, an existing animation and finish polishing it off. Um, like I said, the effects used are, are all a case by case basis. So play around with some of the values, play around with some of the positions of the highlights and make sure um, they're all facing the right way coming from the, from the light direction.